So over the past, I would say, I don't know, two or three years, maybe even longer, there's been a lot of talk about this idea of toxic masculinity. And I think it's actually overstated. And I think there's an actual bigger issue. I want to talk about that. So I want to start with a quote. I didn't uh, discover this quote myself. I actually heard this quote listening to another podcast. It's from a man by the name of Frank Herbert. I don't know anything about this dude. I don't know who he is, what he's done. I don't know if he's an author, philosopher. Uh, I, like I said, I don't know much about him. I should. Um. So actually, uh, now that I'm looking at the quote, it comes from, I'm guessing this is something he wrote, Children of Dune. There you go. I guess I should have known that. But anyway, the quote kind of encapsulates what I think about the idea of toxic masculinity. Now, when I, when I make my statements, don't mince my words, I'm not saying that there's not men out there who can be maybe rude, maybe brash, maybe more rude and brash than they really need to be or than anybody needs to be. But let me just read this comment before I keep going. When I am weaker than you, I ask you for freedom because that is according to your principles. When I am stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. One thing I notice is something that happened during the um, the women's liberation movement, I guess, so to speak, is as this movement gained notoriety, uh, gained some semblance of, I guess, power, so to speak, as they gain more power, they gain more influence. And I think you're beginning to see that influence play out in society. Now, I I personally think the problem is, is not really toxic masculinity. I think the feminist movement may have been co-opted. Some people say definitively, which I personally believe it has been co-opted, but I say maybe because maybe you have a counter argument that's valid, but I think personally it's co-opted. So I'll go with maybe Um, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a psychic. I can't read people's minds. I don't know the answer to this definitively, but here's what I say. I think the, the toxicity of the feminist movement is actually what has caused a bigger, greater problem in society. The idea that masculine things in and of themselves are toxic is a problem. And in my opinion, that's really what has been pushed by this movement. You have men in our current age being more feminine than, uh, I don't want to say than any other time in history. I don't want to be hyperbolic. You know, like like I understand all of history or like I was there. But as far as I can see, as far as I know, there's more feminine things going on amongst men than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And so I think several things play a part in this. Right. I grew up without a father. There are certain things I miss, certain things that you need as a man. Right. It's part of manhood and it is actually things that's very helpful. I missed a lot of these things. What I've noticed, even though I miss these things and I didn't necessarily know adequately how to translate these things into a young man, I have two sons. And what I noticed is my presence and activeness alone has has breeded a balance in my sons that I did not even see in myself. There is a a balanced masculinity 
that I see in them that I didn't even have myself. Now, I've never been and am not, you know, a, a, a feminine, what would what, what be considered a feminine kind of dude. That's just not how I'm wired. You know, I, I grew up with my mom without my pops, but my mom was very adamant about her boys being men. Like this was something that was drilled into our head. Now, there's only so much she could do as a woman, right? A, a, a mother can only go so far towards teaching a boy how to be a man. And that's no dig at single moms out there. That's just reality. There's only so much you can do. There's only so far you can carry a young man until he needs that that help and that assistance and that that. I don't know what it is, that certain spice that the man adds to his life. Uh, my ex-wife, we had many conversations about my sons growing up. And this is something that I told to her. I'm not saying that this is a blanket statement that's true for everybody. I know how my sons are wired. And what I told her is at some point at a certain age, there's things that you're going to have to let me tell them. It's not going to be received in the same fashion and in the same way coming from you, it's going to be a problem. And I knew this, right? I know how, how things work when I grew up. There were certain things where me and my mom just butted heads. Uh, we, we butted heads consistently. And what, I, what I've noticed in, in the life of my sons, which made me realize this about button head, button heads with my mom when I was growing up is there were certain things she was telling me that I just, I'm going to keep it real with you. I just did not want to hear it coming from a woman. Now to any women who are listening to you, this might seem like, oh, that's toxic masculinity. This is reality. The problem I have with a lot of philosophies of the current day is it's what's ever popular for that day, whatever the new sauce is for the day, right? So if somebody says, yo, I got this new phrase, that new phrase is the new sauce and everybody gravitates toward that phrase without any critical analysis of the idea. Toxic masculinity was, was mentioned, it was pushed and nobody approached it. Well, I say nobody let's say the mainstream didn't approach this idea with any kind of critical hat, right? Nobody said, okay, this is a possibility, but does that mean this is 100% truth? Let's break this down. What is the real problem? When you look at the rate of divorce worldwide, not just in the United States, this is worldwide. Divorce is a problem. When you look at the, the single parent homes and how many of those homes are women and not men. There are men who are single parents, but that's rare. You see this more with women. What does that breed? What what does it breed when you don't have a balanced family? I understand that that there's people out there who believe you don't need a man and a woman. You can have this other kind of family that society has tried to push. I get that. I hear you. I understand where you're coming from, but respectfully, you're wrong. A family is meant to be man, woman, children. This is the order and balance of life. There's things that that a mom can offer to children that a father cannot. There's things that a father can offer to children that a mom cannot. And those different things are 100 percent based on the male and female dynamic. It doesn't matter how how tomboyish or how masculine a woman is. There's certain things that that you're just not wired the same about. It doesn't matter how feminine a man is. There's just certain things you're not wired the same about. You need that balance. So what I think is the real problem that we see in, in the world, in my opinion, is the toxicity of feminism has spread into society. I did not say, do not mince my words, I did not say that feminism in its truest sense is a problem, right? Women are not subservient to men. 
women are not somehow worse off than men because they are women. We are different. We are different. God has designed us for different reasons and different purposes. This is just the facts of life. I also understand there are those of you out among the masses that may not believe that there is a God. I get it. You can believe whatever you want, but I'm just telling you the reality is men and women are designed for two different purposes. We are not the same. We are not meant for the same exact things. And this is where, in my opinion, people get wrapped around the axle and this is where they get messed up. And this is where the real problem, like I said, in my opinion, is the toxicity of feminism. When you have convinced, when you have convinced a, when you have convinced a man that he has to get in touch with his air quote feminine side, you know what I've not heard ever. Now I'm not saying this idea is not out there. It may be out there. What I've never heard is that a woman needs to get in touch with her masculine side. I've never heard that. Not saying it's not out there, but it's definitely not pushed among the masses, right? So you have men being taught, oh, you have to get in touch with your feminine side. Now, let me also throw this out there. And this is something that I taught my sons. Being a man doesn't mean being always aggressive. Being a man doesn't mean being rude. Being a man doesn't mean being loud. That's not what makes a man. Being a man does not mean lack of emotion. Being a man does not mean you cannot cry. The problem is the, the feminist movement in its current form has a caricature of what masculinity is. Now, sometimes in a masculine setting, you do um, um, show that masculinity in in certain emotions, i.e. aggression when it's necessary. Sometimes aggression is necessary. Sometimes you may get loud and forceful because the situation may call for that. The thing is, when you have a balance as far as being a man, you understand that there is a time and a place for these things. These things are not just supposed to be exaggerated and, and exploited and expressed 24 seven. That's not healthy. It's not healthy for anyone. And, and in no situation is this something that, that is or should be called for. It's not called for that any, any man that understand truly what it is and what it means to be a man. But what I think is the feminist movement has taught certain young men that you ought to suppress certain things about yourself. Now, any anybody that understands anything about psychology, when you suppress something that is natural, when you suppress something that happens naturally over the course of a lifetime, then at some point that thing is going to come out. The only problem is it's going to be exaggerated and it's going to be exaggerated at an unhealthy level. In my opinion, this is what truly has happened. The toxicity of modern feminism has taught many men and many young men that, yo, you can't ever be aggressive. You can't ever be loud. You have to always suppress these things right here. So when a situation does call for maybe getting a little, a little more boisterous, when a situation maybe does call for getting a little more aggressive, if a young man suppresses that his whole life into his adulthood, when that thing finally comes out, you're going to get rape. You're going to get murder. You're going to get brash rudeness because this young man has not been taught the balance of being a man. It's, it's not necessarily, look, I'm no, I'm not one for this whole alpha male community. That's not what this is about. What this truly is about is the fact that have we thought about how we've thrown the scales of, of, of balance off in our, in our current world, right? We think we know so much. We think we know so much 
that we mess with the natural order of things and actually mess things up. Humans have been doing this since Adam and Eve. We think we know better. We go in to mess with something. Oh, we need to change this or we need to change that. And we just mess up the entire natural order of things. It's just what we do. But I think the idea of, of toxic masculinity is, is not necessarily what people think it is. And the reason I read that quote um, from Frank Herbert is this. The feminist movement moved on the, the nobility of, of men early on in a movement. Now, I would say that I'm not criticizing in a broad stroke all of feminism, right? That's why I like to preface modern feminism is derailed. What happened was femin uh, the feminist movement played on the nobility of real men that understood what it meant to be a man. But there was an undertone and that undertone was a group of people, powers that be, whoever it was, spiritual or uh, spiritual powers behind the scenes that knew as soon as we get in the position of power, we will not repay with respect this nobility. We will do what we want and shut down masculinity. I think that's a bigger problem. I'm not saying that I'm 100 percent right. I'm just saying as an anecdotal observation, watching a life of my sons, watching the balance that's come from both me and their mom. They're not perfect. My kids are not perfect. I'm not saying that, but I've noticed a balanced manhood about them that I didn't even see in myself. There's things that I've had to address in my own life as an adult, not growing up with a father, but I've, I've sought to correct these things as I was raising my sons. And I think this, this idea of toxic masculinity really has taken us way off the rails. Just my opinion. Thank you.